have some kind of statement, please? Did you kill Elliot Tompkins? He was drunk. What did you say? I said, did you kill Elliot Tompkins? No, I didn't kill Elliot Tompkins, but I can't say I'm sorry that I'm is dead. And so Neil Fitzsimmons, Canada's self-made millionaire, builder of dams and bridges, tunnels and pipelines, was today formally charged with the murder of Elliot Tompkins, chairman of the Canadian National Resources Board. The Crown maintains that Mr. Fitzsimmons beat Mr. Tompkins to death following a violent argument over Tompkins' public announcement that he was going to award the $250 million contract to build a new pan-Canadian pipeline to a competitor, Bordine Enterprises. In lengthy and often heated arguments today on the matter of bail, Fitzsimmons was represented by John Davis Ogden, a leading Toronto attorney, who argued that all of the prosecution's evidence was circumstantial. Nevertheless, Fitzsimmons was ordered held without bail. On the lighter side of the news today, a Montreal woman who refused to pay taxes because she claimed her house was actually a stable for horses. Operator, uh, this is 555-4209. I'd like to place a call to Lincoln, Nebraska in the States. Miss, uh, area code 402, the number is 303-3100. B. Jefferson Keyes lives in Nebraska. I doubt that he's ever been to Lincoln, Nebraska. But the trunk lines into Lincoln are never busy. Now it's ringing. Now Jeff will take a chance on just about anything except a busy signal. That could cost him a million bucks. 303-3100, may I help you? Uh, yes, uh, I'm John Ogden. I'm calling from Toronto. May I speak to Mr. Keyes, please? It's urgent. One moment, please. Mr. Ogden? May I have your mother's maiden name, please? Look, Mr. Keyes has worked with me before. Her name was Mason, Geraldine Mason. And your place of birth? Vancouver, province of British Columbia, Dominion of Canada. Thank you. Mr. Keyes is in his plane. I'll put through a radio patch. He flies his own plane. <laughs> I would, too, at his fee. Oh, that's a million dollars if he succeeds. Zero if he doesn't. And he pays all the expenses. Mr. Ogden? I have Mr. Keyes for you. Go ahead, please. Jeff. John Ogden, can you hear me? I could hear you a lot better if you stop shouting, John. What's on your mind? Come up to Canada. I have a client who's in a little bit of trouble. And I'd like you to get him out of it. Neil Fitzsimmons, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the man who wants to pave the earth and paint it green, according to Time Magazine. What's he done? Murder, according to the Crown. You call that a little trouble? Jeff, I need your help. Well, murder's not special to the house. You know that, John. What you want's a good private detective. Now, there are a lot of good men in Toronto, and I'd be happy to recommend a few. Jeff, I've used them all. I hate to put it this way, but you do owe me a bit of a favor. I'm glad you hate to put it that way, because it just smacks a, a touch of blackmail. Jeff, a man's life is at stake. And I owe you a favor. Where are you? I'm in Toronto. I'll pick you up at the airport. No, don't bother. My car will be there. I'll see you at 10 a.m. Tomorrow morning, see all steps. Don't tell me. Let me guess. We're filing a new flight plan. You've been eavesdropping again, Tony. Think of the time it saves. I'll radio McGinnis and have them send your car ahead. You mind if I make a comment? You'll make it anyway, so go ahead. You should have stuck with no. Well, you heard the man. I owe him a favor. Yeah, but it sounds like gumshoe work. And I never heard of a million-dollar pair of gumshoes. Not to mention the fact that you're not even good at that racket. Psst. You mind if I reply? Point one. To a man like Fitzsimmons, the difference between 10,000 and a million is two zeros on a piece of paper. Point two. It might not be gumshoe work, so go. Toronto. We're almost there.
Milford Simmons. He started with nothing. Well, you may be working your way down to that yourself. Mexico was a wipeout, right? Stop keeping score. It's bad for my ego. If Canada's another bummer... I'll get myself a cheaper pilot. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. Why not? You like the best. <laughs> in our cement culture, when a community's limited funds come together with an architect's unlimited talent. Nice place, unless you're in jail there. When I heard Tompkins was going to give the job to Bordeens Corporation, a job I want more than I want to breathe, a job yes, that no uh, one... Just stick to the facts, huh? Not what you thought, what you felt, just what you did. <sighs> okay, the facts. Where was I? You're saying Tompkins had leaked to the press that he was going to give the job to jail Bordeen. Yeah. I was in Kelly's Oyster Bar when I first heard about it. So I switched from oysters to whiskey. When I had enough whiskey, I decided to go and see Tompkins, tell him what I thought about him. I didn't find him until Sunday. Day of the murder. The morning of the day of the murder. Tompkins was murdered in the afternoon, oh, about 2.30. Uh, when I was 60 miles away. Anyway, I told Tompkins I was going to ruin him for what he'd done. I told him he was incompetent, he took kickbacks, and he was a crook. I told him what I thought of a system of government that would allow one half-baked, prissy civil servant decide who was going to build Canada, give the country muscle, and who would just stand by and watch it go down the drain. Then I left. With him still alive? I never touched him. Anyone see you leave? No. He met me in the garden, we stayed in the garden. No one saw Fitz arrive or leave. Although I admitted being there that morning. He had to. His fingerprints were on a chair, a glass, other places. I would have admitted it anyway. And what happened next? I tried to cool off. I had a head of steam that had driven a chisel through ten feet of bedrock. Next time I looked around, I was on the Queen Elizabeth Highway, headed out of town, on what turned out to be the road to Niagara Falls. It worked, I guess. The driving, I mean. Okay. So I wouldn't build a pan-Canadian pipeline. I'd live. And suddenly, there I was, Niagara Falls, all pulled together. By the time I parked, had a look around, I was as calm as I ever am. What time was that? About 2.30. Tompkins talked to a friend at 2.30, on the phone. The body was found oh, a few minutes after 3. But you see, I couldn't have done it. Mr. Fitzsimmons, are you saying that in all that time you didn't see anyone you knew or talk to anybody? I sure did. I stopped for gas just outside Niagara Falls. And the old geezer running the pumps, he recognized me. So we talked. We talked quite a while. He worked for me about 20 years ago up in Alaska. If you talk to a gas station attendant, you have a witness. Jeff, that... he's dead. Oh, that's sweet, huh? The coroner's verdict is... Uh... Heart attack. 
two days later. Will you work for me? I'm sorry, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, I can't give you an answer yet. Do you think he's innocent? Jeff, I'm his friend. I'm also his attorney. I'll defend him, innocent or guilty. John, I appreciate that. I don't mean to be crass, but... As an attorney, you get paid whether your clients go to jail for life or they go free. I don't. Now, give me something, anything. Do you believe him? Yes. I believe he's innocent. <laughs> I didn't owe John Ogden a favor that could cost me $50,000. So I stopped and asked myself why I hadn't said no right there. The answer, I liked Neil Fitzsimmons. And since I can't afford to make decisions on evidence as flimsy as that, I decided to talk to someone who didn't like him. The second biggest earth mover in Canada, J.L. Bourdine. Neil Fitzsimmons is violent, volatile, arrogant. Capable of doing anything to get what he wants. He'll cheat, steal, bribe. Will he murder? Yes. He wants to be top of the heap, king of the hill. Canada is doomed without Neil Fitzsimmons. That's his religion. Everything he builds is a monument to himself, a pyramid. And he's the pharaoh. That's pretty strong. Strong? Well, I mean, you've been competitors for a long time. Enemies is a better word. 20 years. Anyhow, he blew it this time. With Tompkins alive, I had a contract. With Tompkins dead and Neil accused of killing him, I still have a contract. Well, thank you for your information and your opinion. Mr. Keyes. I owe you an apology. For what? Letting my own feelings, lots of fights over lots of years, make me say things that I know I'd regret five minutes after you were gone. I do think Fitz is violent, arrogant, and all of that. But I don't think he'd commit murder. No, he wouldn't kill another human being just to get what he wanted. Including the Pan-Canadian pipeline? Including an order for new pyramids. Thank you, sir. They say you can't run away from your problems. I say, if you have wheels, give it a try. Besides, being a single man, I'd never seen Niagara Falls. On the way there, I stopped at the gas station where the old man had worked. There was a young man there now. He said he never knew the old man who died. And did I want regular or premium? Simmons said he'd done, but not with any hope of finding anything. Maybe I was just looking for something I could talk about when I told John Ogden I wouldn't take the job. And then quite suddenly, I knew I was going to take the job. I even knew why. Although the odds against success were obviously about a thousand to one. Jeff, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Well, I think I'm just prolonging it a bit, John. The odds are a thousand to one, I'm going to get nowhere. On top of which, I'm going to be out $25,000. Come on, you sounded optimistic on the phone. Well, I've done a lot of thinking since then. Niagara Falls bus tour arrives 2.30 every day. I was usually crawling with tourists, and the tourists are crawling with cameras. And since it's a charter, they keep a record, and I've got a list of 18 people who were there at the same time Fitzsimmons claims he was there. Now, John, I'm not talking about witnesses. I know that's a dead end. I'm talking about a long shot. Pictures. I mean, if I can come up with Fitzsimmons in the background of one of their pictures... Now, come on, Jeff, that's a great idea. No one else even thought about it. Seven private detectives. 
when I think of how much they charge. Well, you better start thinking about what I charge. Ah, but you are worth it. Well, we'll see. Fitzsimmons in one of their pictures. What could be better? Well, just take it easy, John. It's the thinnest idea I've ever come up with. Not to mention the fact that I gotta look up 18 strangers and cover 10,000 miles. I had 18 tourists to see, 10,000 miles to travel, and about 100,000 pictures to look at, give or take a few thousand. Soon there were 15 tourists left and thousands of pictures. tourists and thousands of pictures. Then only five tourists and a few thousand more pictures. I saw faces and people caught unaware behind the faces. But Neil Fitzsimmons was not among them. I came full circle. I was back in Canada on my way to Quebec City, capital of the province of Quebec. Now, Quebec is a piece of Europe in North America, a larger France, and all quite beautiful. But my mind was on those odds. Now I put them at 8,000 to 1. I had only two tourists left to see, number 17 and 18. Seventeen was a woman named Nicole Rambo. You're thirsty now. Here we are. There. Isn't they lovely? Oh, speak to me. Can you say anything to me? Oh. There we are. A little more. Oh, now don't you like it anymore? Oh. Here. Oh, are you mad at me? Oh, you're not mad at me. Come here. Come back. That's right. Madame Rambeau was charming and gracious, someone from a gentler time, and she wanted terribly to help, but it wasn't there. I'm so sorry. Oh, please, don't apologize. I enjoyed looking at them very much. There are some more. I was late taking them to the shop. Maybe I could get them back by tomorrow. Oh, that would be fine. Uh, if you call me when you get them back, I'm staying at the Hotel Chateau Front tonight. Certainly, Mr. Keyes. Have you seen Claudine Duval's photographs yet? She took many, many pictures. Oh? Yes. She had three cameras with her all the time. One here, and one here, and um, a little one here. <sighs> She'll have something for you, I'm sure of that. Well, I hope so. She's the last one on my list. Claudine Duval, tourist number 18 and last. The odds were now 16,000 to one. And if anyone had offered them to me, I'd have said, forget it. Uh, Claudine Duval? Yes. My name is Jefferson Keyes. Yes. May I come in? No. Mr. Val, you were at Niagara Falls on June 3rd. Yes, I was. You took a great deal of photographs that day. Who are you? What is this? I'd like to come in and look at your photographs, if I may. It's important, believe me. To whom? To a friend of mine who's in a great deal of trouble. He claims he was at Niagara Falls on the afternoon of June 3rd, and he hasn't been able to prove it yet. If he should show up in the background of one of your shots. He's out of trouble. Right. And if he's not in one of my pictures... He goes to prison for the rest of his life. Oh. Well, yeah. Come in. Thank you.
Here you go. so rude at the door. Mama warned you about strangers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mama was right. You can uh, compliment me on my composition later. Oh, they're good. Very good. Would you like some coffee? I just made some. Yes, I would. Thank you. Okay. The pictures were good. The coffee was great, and Claudine Duval was nice. But there wasn't a single picture, and there were over a hundred that had anyone who even remotely resembled Neil Fitzsimmons in the background. Nothing? No, I'm afraid not. Would you like some more coffee? No, thanks. I've really got to be going. Thanks for your trouble anyway. Oh, here, let me help you with those. You know, there was a lot of other tourists on that bus. Eighteen, to be exact, and I've checked them all. Well, it was a crazy idea to begin with. You wouldn't happen to have any other pictures around here, would you? No. I'm afraid that's it. Goodbye, Miss Duval. Thanks again. Back to my hotel, I intended to call Ogden and tell him our long shot not only hadn't paid off, it never left the starting gate. But the doorman told me there was a message waiting for me at the desk. Madame Rambeau had that final batch of pictures for me. So there was still a chance. Say, uh, a million to one? Ah, Claudine. You know, I was sure with all the photographs she took, she would be able to help you. Look at all the cameras she carries. Are you telling me this is Claudine Duval? Of course. I thought you just spoke with her. Broke every traffic law in the books of Quebec City. If someone had rung in a fake Claudine Duval, then Fitz was innocent. And I had a chance.
Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Val. Are these your sketches? Yes. Good. Very good. You know, your sketches are even better than your photography. Thank you. Hmm. Now, that's lovely. That's... That's quite good. It has a certain kind of... honesty to it. Noon already. Lunchtime. Can I persuade you to have lunch with me? No. Sorry, I don't eat lunch. Well, how about dinner? You do eat dinner, don't you? Well, uh, you see, I really don't know you, so I'd have to say no. I'll try to arrange it. Mr. Val? I didn't expect her to think there was anything accidental about my visit to the boardwalk. But I did expect her to do something about it. And she did. Simmons was innocent, who was guilty? That was a frightening thought. Someone as powerful and as wealthy as Fitz, but a thousand times more ruthless. You're following me. Why? I think it's time you and I had a talk. About what? About who you are, for one. Claudine Duvall is my name, and excuse me, please. <gasps> what are you doing? Oh, it's just an egg hunt. You know how it is with a woman's purse. That's funny. It says your name is Annette Bourne. Now, who do you work for? Why were you impersonating Claudine Duvall? Where is Claudine? I don't know. Now, where is she and whose pictures did I see? I told you before, I don't know. You don't catch on, do you? I told you once before, a man is under arrest for a murder he didn't commit. Now, what were you doing in that apartment? I Who put you there? I don't any of your questions. You sure as hell do, honey. Now, you're in big trouble. You're guilty of breaking, entering, and obstructing justice. I haven't broken any laws. I just named two. Now, come on. They said they were with the government. Who? If I promise to tell you the truth, you won't take me to the police. All right. All right, we have an agreement. I live in the apartment below Claudine. I don't even know the girl except to say hello to her. Yesterday, two men came to me, showed me identification, said they were with the government and they needed help. They asked you to pass yourself off as Claudine, show me pictures, and, and you didn't question that? Well, I, at first I said no, but they insisted. They said it was vital to the government, something to do with, um, internal security. Those men aren't government agents. They were hired by whoever it was that killed Elliot Tompkins. Neil Fitzsimmons? Neil Fitzsimmons didn't kill anyone, and I'm trying to prove that. These men were trying to make me believe I'd reached a dead end, and I would have, if I hadn't found out you are in Claudine Duval. Now, with your testimony, I can... Wait a minute, what testimony? He just gave me your word. I agreed I wouldn't take you to the police, and I'm not. I'm taking you to a man in Toronto, Fitzsimmons' attorney. He's one of the best criminal lawyers in the country. We'll be charged with breaking and entering and instructing justice, and God knows what else. I don't need a criminal lawyer, because I'm not going to Toronto. Miss, I don't think you understand. Without your help, Neil Fitzsimmons will be found guilty. Murder. But the little I know, it's not going to make any difference. If I thought it would, I'd go. Now, would you please let go of me? And let me go. You come here, Toronto, please. If you don't let go of me, I'm afraid I'll have to resort to something terribly trite, but it's always effective. I'm going to cry rape. Miss 
born. Those men who hired you, they're sharp. They're desperate and they're highly paid. They're going to know you talk to me, and they're not going to let it go at that. You can't just walk away. Watch me. La citadelle a été construite par les Britanniques en 1820 et non par les Français. Et ça a pris 32 ans pour la construire. Et ici, derrière moi, juste sur le côté ici, il y a le consulat américain. Alors, derrière moi, là-bas, le grand bâtiment que vous voyez, c'est le château Frontenac. Et le château Frontenac, c'est le bâtiment le plus connu de la ville de Québec. Le, le château Frontenac, c'est un hôtel du Canadien Pacifique. Ça a été construit en 1892. Alors, il n'est pas tellement vieux, il a seulement 80 ans. men back there trying to kill you. They don't care who gets in their way. I don't know how to break this to you, Annette, but uh, it wasn't me they were shooting at. It was you. What kind of a chance do you think you'd have if I left you back there? Those guys are killers. The only chance you've got is in Toronto with me. Now, why don't you just relax? Once Ogden takes your deposition, you're perfectly safe. Breaking and entering and obstructing justice. And you've got a perfect doubt. I mean, they told you they were government agents and you were act acting out of patriotism, right? They paid me a thousand dollars. What? Well, people who work for the government get paid, don't they? 
Yeah, a living wage. But did it ever occur to you that maybe a thousand dollars was a little generous for five minutes' work? Well, I needed the money. I tried not to think about that part of it. Well, that's an answer. Will that be an answer for the Quebec police? Why would they hire a girl to pretend she was, um... Claudine Duval. And fix her up with pictures? Unless they were damn frightened that I might be in some of those films that woman actually shot. That's exactly the way I figured. Oh, no, wait a minute. That girl may be proof to us, but she wouldn't mean a thing to a judge and jury. For all they know, we could have set this thing up ourselves, bought her testimony. You sound like you're working for the prosecution. I'm an attorney. I deal in facts, not in fantasies. All right, John. Facts. And that born is a fact. Claudine Duval, wherever she is, is a fact. Claudine's photographs, wherever they are, are facts. Fine, fine, fine. Only all we have at this point is Annette Bourne. The unsupported word of one girl. All the rest is sheer speculation. That's true, John, that's true. You know, things might have been different if somebody wasn't a couple steps ahead of me all the way. Somebody knew my plans. They were able to arrange for the phony photographs, the phony Claudine. That took advanced knowledge, and I only confided in one man. Are you suggesting I had something to do with Who it? Who else knew what I was doing? Did you? Of course he did. I told him. Who else did you tell? You lousy... What's going on here? It's all right, Doc. Mr. Ogden slipped. You all right, sir? Yeah. John. No one is accusing you. Oh, but I was. Not anymore. I'm sorry, John. I, I, I had to take a shot. You'd accuse your own mother if you thought it would help things, wouldn't you? Well, oh, wouldn't you? John, when I called you from Niagara Falls, uh, that was on your private line. Do you have an extension? No. No, no, I, I took the call in my den. The door was closed. I was alone. I never told a soul, except Fitz, what you were up to. And how would anybody know? Wiretap. John, over here. Let me have that glass. See the scratch marks on the wall, the nicks on the wire covering? Wiretap. You big boys play dirty. Sometimes. But it doesn't include murder. Well, it does now, John. Jeff, without corroborating testimony, Annette Bourne is worthless to our case. We need the men who hired her. But most of all, we need Claudine Duval's picture. Do you think you can find her before they do? There you go again, John. You're asking for odds. I'm sorry. It's too long. You're not sure they haven't found her already, are you? Well, they didn't have her two days ago. They wouldn't have used a net. What I'd like to do, I'd, I'd like to find Claudine just a little before they do. And then nail them at the same time. Claudine's apartment. Okay, now that's your job. While I'm not trying to find out where she is, she just may turn up here, so you monitor the apartment. Now, if you think you see her, but you want to get a closer look, you turn this. Come here. What? This here. 
and take a look. Okay. Now turn it okay. back. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, now, look. Yes. This is a directional mic. I've got it hooked up to the television set, and it's all ready to go. Channel three. Voila. Sensational. Oh, one last trick. If you're not quite sure of what you saw, it might be Claudine, it might not. Just stop it. Rewind it. And start it again. Now, you won't get sound while you're shooting, but it's being recorded on replay. Picture and sound, okay? Any questions? Just one. Who are you? Sit down. And keep your eye on the monitor. How long will you be gone? Only as long as absolutely necessary. What happens if I see Claudine and you're not here? Pull this up. You press that button. What's this? It's a telephone. All I have is twin. Hmm? Doesn't it ring? It throbs against my body. I think I'm selfish, don't you? I mean, running away from you and not wanting to help when a man's life is at stake, that's selfish. Uh, a little. I think you're mostly scared. Well, I'm not scared anymore. I mean, I'm a little scared. Not even me, unless I give you a password, a name. Yeah. Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Now you know how much I really trust you. It's a closely guarded secret. It's my middle name. as any to start, and as bad. They didn't know Claudine had been to Niagara Falls, much less where she went after that. And bad went to worse. At Air Canada, they used a computer to check on the whereabouts of one Claudine Duval. No whereabouts. They checked all the right places, where she banked, where she bought her groceries. Once in a while, one thing led to another, and the other was a dead end. I kept in touch with Annette just to be sure she was all right. The only encouraging note was that wherever I went, somebody had been there before me asking the same questions. So they were still looking for Claudine too and getting nowhere like me. Soon it was too late to talk to anybody who might help. They were all asleep, including Annette.
you know, you promised to tell me who you are. Jefferson Keys. Jefferson Ferdinand Keys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No more secrets. Just one. What's that? Well, I found that thousand dollars that you took from me. Now, I told you that was evidence. Well, we can get more evidence. That's why we're here. Money isn't important. I mean, there's no proof that that particular thousand dollars came from those particular men, right? I mean, it's just a question of your word against mine. You're a mercenary. No, not very. You're a larcenous. Well, I earned that money. I need it. You saw my paintings. You said they were good. Yeah, they're good. Well, they're not good enough. You see, there's a teacher in Paris, and he's very expensive. I've saved for two years to study with him. That thousand dollars, I could probably make it. Well, all things being equal, you weren't prompted out of any kind of patriotism, were you? No. I did it for the money. I'm glad you told me that. Because I can only take nobility in small doses. That's my head. Would you please tell me who I'm kissing? I suppose you would call me a... Uh, an arranger. Right now, I'm trying to arrange freedom for Neil Fitzsimmons. Well, you must be a very special arranger. A trained arranger. Yeah, well, a couple of years ago, I was working for a certain American intelligence agency. You know, the kind of organization that trains you to within one inch of your life. Do you work for that organization now? You won't give up, will you? No. No. I was on a field operation in the Near East, and uh, when a bomb went off, and a lot of innocent people were hurt. Anyhow, my cover was blown along with everything else, and it gave me an excuse to get out of there. What does an arranger like you get paid? Not a dime if I don't succeed. It's a shame. I mean, I got paid a thousand dollars and I didn't succeed. Uh -huh. For which I will be eternally grateful. Well, how much do you get paid if you do succeed? A million dollars. That's nice. same, only it rained harder. I followed every possible lead, by car, by phone when I could. Nothing. I didn't know if Claudine Duval was in Kenya, Kentucky, or Cucamonga. Our plan stayed the same. While I looked high and low, over and under, Annette just kept looking at the TV set, in case Claudine was someplace even closer, like home. One thing had become very clear. He was a compulsive traveler and a loner with very few friends.
places to go. I was just about to give up for the day when my telephone signaled a call from Annette. Annette, what have you got? I just saw Claudine. She got out of a taxi not more than a minute ago. Was she alone? Yes, she had some hand luggage and cameras, and she's inside now. Anyone follow her in? No. Okay, I'm on my way. Now listen, if you spot those two hitmen going in before I get there, call me. Of course I will. And if they happen to show up after I get there... I'll, I'll call you either way. Good girl. Wonderful, you're brave, you're beautiful. How did you know they were here? Well, I, I was just doing my job watching the television set, and, and a truck pulled away, and uh, I, I could see the street better, and I saw their car. And I just decided they must have been here all along. Intelligent. Genius. Thousand dollars worth? Maybe later we'll talk about a bonus. Yeah, part of the million, huh? You don't expect to find conscience in hired guns. So I didn't even try appealing to their better nature. I talked sense. They didn't talk at all. One thing was working for me. When you buy loyalty, it only lasts as long as the payments do. Now, if we found the picture we needed, it would prove Fitzsimmons innocent. And they might get a little worried about how much protection their boss could offer. It was a good ploy. It would work. Only we didn't find a single shot with Fitz in the background. And Claudine had developed every role of film. Thank you. 
Well, that just about wraps it up. Except for you two, of course. We've got some details to go over. Boy, you two have really been busy. Now, let's see. Uh, first, there's uh, impersonating government agents, uh, breaking and entering, attempted kidnapping, assault with a deadly weapon. What was the last one? Oh, yeah, murder. Murder? How soon we forget. Elliot Tompkins. We had nothing to do with that. Shut up. What do you mean, shut up? We had nothing to do with it. Who did? All right. It's a life sentence for you or whoever you work for. It's as simple as that. It's you. I want to make a deal. Interested? You bet I am. Will you guarantee John Ogden is my attorney if I cooperate? You got it. Now, who killed Tompkins? J.L. Bourdain. J.L. Bourdain, huh? Oh, come on. It doesn't make sense. Tompkins stated publicly he was giving that pipeline job to Bourdain. It was a setup. Tompkins intended giving that contract to Fitzsimmons' company all along. He announced what he did in order to drive Fitzsimmons' stock down. Tompkins was buying Fitzsimmons' stock. Yeah, that's right. So that later, when he changes his mind, the stock shoots back up again. But where does Bourdain... When he found out what Tompkins was up to, he went wild. We had nothing to do with it. Bourdain killed him on his own. J.L. Bourdain, huh? Please. Mr. Bourdain, did you kill Elliot Tompkins? Needless to say, Neil Fitzsimmons was a grateful man. And now I was square with John Ogden on that favor. Always pay your debts, I say. And I owed one to Annette. In a fleeting moment of gratitude, I had mentioned a bonus. And she remembered it well. I can't believe it. I'm really going to Paris. Well, believe it. You are. Jeff, is this really your plane? The truth? No. I lease it. How much? 248000 per annum. Jeff, I have one more question. I know, I know, I know. Who am I? Oh, who cares? Is there room over there for two? Watch Margaret Heckler.